November 12, 2025, 0615 Central European Time. A 2.7 kilometer fracture opens across Mount Etna's southeast flank. What appears at first to be another effusive event routine for Europe's most active volcano begins transmitting data that doesn't match 40 years of baseline measurements. What remains uncertain? Eruption duration, days, weeks, months. Explosive transition probability, chemistry suggests risk, timing unknown, Flank stability threshold, movement accelerating, failure point undefined, magma supply rate, continuous feed from depth or finite pulse, additional fissure likelihood, pressure distribution beneath the flank is unclear, three possible paths forward, one do gradual decline, magma supply depletes, flows slow and eruption ends, two sustained effusion, continues at reduced rate for weeks slash months, Phase transition, shift to explosive activity driven by volatile saturation. What remains constant, the volcano continues, the mountain moves, and the people of Sicily evacuated. Monitoring or waiting in their homes, navigate uncertainty with the resilience born of living, where the earth reminds you it is not stable. Volcanoes don't negotiate. They pressurize, fracture, and erupt on timescales indifferent to human schedules. What we can do, measure, model, and communicate imperfectly, but persistently. If you value documentaries built from data rather than fear, subscribe. The eruption isn't finished, neither is the science. The monitoring network tracks every measurable parameter, seismometers record tremors in real time, GPS stations update deformation every 15 minutes. Drones sample gas composition hourly, satellites provide thermal imaging every six hours, the data accumulates, the volcano has not revealed its timeline. This is the frontier of volcanology, measurement without prophecy. We know the pressures, we see the movement, we sample the chemistry, but the transition from observation to prediction remains elusive. The volcano operates on its schedule, indifferent to human timelines. Mount Etna has shaped Sicilian culture for millennia. Its volcanic soils produce wines, citrus, and pistachios unmatched elsewhere in Europe. Its eruptions create landscapes that define the Mediterranean aesthetic. Tourism built around the volcano supports tens of thousands of livelihoods. The mountain gives, the mountain takes. But proximity carries consequence. Nearly 1 million people live within 30 kilometers of the summit. Infrastructure roads, power, and water thread through terrain shaped by past eruptions and vulnerable to future ones. Modern monitoring provides hours or days of warning where previous generations had none. Yet the fundamental question persists. How do you plan permanence around impermanence? This documentary was constructed from satellite telemetry, seismic archives, laboratory analysis, and field observations, the numbers are preliminary, the interpretations are provisional, science advances through revision. What we present today will be refined tomorrow as peer review proceeds and additional data accumulates. Confirmed as of November 18, 2025, lateral fissure 2.7 km length, 1200-10,800 milets in elevation, magma source depth 35 to 40 km, Silica content, 54%, many to 1%, analytical uncertainty. Analytical uncertainty, but love to have you join our community and contribute to the project. Flow velocities, 6 to 10 kilometers h, radar derived. Southeast flank displacement, 18 centimeters in 10 days. In 10 days, seismic events, 3,847 earthquakes, M1.0 pos, since Nove 8, so 2 flux, 15,000 tons day current what the data cannot yet answer. Seven days into the eruption, the evidence base is substantial but incomplete. System pressure rising, NOV 12, eight, three active lava channels, 5.4 kilometer maximum advance, 85,000 without power, 18,400 evacuated, 400 meter road network severed. The eruption consumes 127 structures in its first 48 hours, farmhouses, barns, a 17th century chapel in the path of the northeastern flow, vineyards producing DOC certified wine ignite, citrus orchards vanish beneath basalt, the lava doesn't discriminate, it follows gravity and topography. No deaths are attributed to lava flows, the monitoring system provided sufficient warning. Evacuations proceeded without casualties from the primary hazard, but four people died from earthquake-related building collapses, the magnitude 5.3 event on November 13th that struck beneath Catania. Older masonry structures sustained damage across the city, in Zafirana Etna, approximately 800 residents refuse evacuation orders. Some are elderly, unwilling to leave homes built by previous generations. Others are younger vineyard owners, farmers, and business operators whose livelihoods exist in the exclusion zone. 
Giuseppe Torisi, 67, remains on his property 1.2 kilometers from the nearest flow front. We understand the risk, he tells RI Television. We choose to stay. Civil protection cannot forcibly remove them. Italian law permits individuals to accept risk when informed. Emergency services establish communication protocols for those who remain on radio check-ins every six hours. If conditions deteriorate, extraction options narrow. The choice carries consequences. March 11, 1669, Mount Etna's most destructive historical eruption began with a lateral fissure on the southern flank. Lava flows advance 16 kilometers, reaching the city of Catania. The flows breach the city walls, consume the western districts, and reach the harbor, burying portions of the coastline and creating new land. Approximately 60,000 people are displaced. The urban core survives, but the western third of the city is lost beneath basalt that remains visible today. Etna produces lateral eruptions when magma pressure overcomes the structural integrity of its flanks. These events occur every 50 to 150 years at varying scales. The 2002 eruption opened fissures on both the northeast and south flanks simultaneously, destroying tourist infrastructure and advancing within three kilometers of Nicolosi. The pattern is recognized. The timing is not. What distinguishes 2025? The chemistry. Previous lateral eruptions tapped Etna's shallow storage system magma that had resided at 2 to 8 kilometers depth for years, evolving and degassing. This event accessed deeper, more primitive material. That difference matters. Rome, Palazzo Chigi. The Italian Prime Minister convenes a crisis session on the third day of the eruption. Present, Minister of Civil Protection, Minister of Interior, Defense Officials, and INGV's Director. The briefing materials are clear. The eruption continues with no indication of cessation. Flank movement is accelerating. Seismic activity remains elevated. And the magma chemistry suggests explosive potential. The decision matrix expand evacuation zones to include areas currently at low but non-zero risk, displacing an additional 50,000 people, or maintain current boundaries and accept that conditions could change faster than response time allows. There is no precedent for the former. There is historical precedent for the latter producing casualties. Dr. Neri presents the seismic data. The southeast flank has displaced 18 centimeters since November 8th. INSAR satellite measurements show deformation accelerating. If the flank fails catastrophically, a scenario with historical geological evidence but no modern precedent, the lateral blast radius could extend beyond current evacuation zones. The probability is low. The consequences are severe. The decision maintain current evacuation zones but stage additional resources and forward positions, expand real-time monitoring, issue updated guidance emphasizing that conditions remain dynamic, prepare expansion protocols if seismic or deformation data crosses predefined thresholds. The approach balances precaution with economic and social disruption. It is not perfect. No option is Helium isotope ratios confirm the origin. Helium-3 to helium-4 signature matches mantle composition. This magma didn't spend time in Etna's shallow system mixing and evolving. It rose directly from 35 to 40 kilometers depth, bypassing the established plumbing. That depth places the source at the base of the crust, where continental rock meets mantle material. The implications, if the eruption transitions from effusive lava flows to explosive activity, fragmentation driven by trapped volatile, the hazard profile expands. Current evacuations assume lava threat only. Explosive phases generate pyroclastic density currents, ashfall, and ballistic projectiles. Different risks, different response protocols, by 18 on November 12th, three distinct lava channels have advanced downslope. The primary flow, heading northeast toward Zafirana Etnia, has traveled 5.4 kilometers. Satellite radar interferometry measures the advance in real time. In certain sections, velocities exceed 10 kilometers per hour, driven by steep terrain and gas-rich magma, maintaining fluidity despite elevated silica. Provincial Road SP92 is severed by 11 Road. Lava 8 meters deep buries 400 meters of asphalt. Upper elevation villages are cut off from ground evacuation routes. Helicopter operations begin, weather permitting. But ash plumes reach 8,000 meters altitude by afternoon, grounding aircraft intermittently. Thousands remain isolated. Volcanic ash accumulates 5 to 8 centimeters across the eastern slope within 12 hours. Wet ash conducts electricity. High voltage transmission lines begin arcing. Substations shut down preemptively. Power outages spread across 10 municipalities, affecting 85,000 residents without electricity. Hospitals activate generators. Cell towers lose commercial power. At 0547, the verification earthquake arrives, magnitude 4.8 at 8 kilometers depth, directly beneath the southeast flank. 
The seismic waveform shows a non-double couple component of ground fracturing, not just slipping. 28 minutes later, the fissure opens. The model held. The timeline didn't allow action beyond alert transmission. By 0830, a helicopter team is airborne with collection equipment. Using a titanium bucket on a cable, they sample molten material directly from the erupting fissure. The container, thermally insulated and sealed, reaches INGV's Catania Laboratory at 0945. Analysis begins immediately. What they find will reframe the event. Dr. Sophia Greco performs X-ray fluorescence spectrometry on the sample. The results appear at 1120. She recalibrates, runs it again. The composition is anomalous. Silica content, 54%. Etna's typical basalt measures 48%. That 6% difference shifts magma behavior fundamentally. Higher silica means higher viscosity magma that resists flow, that traps gas more efficiently. Combined with elevated volatile content, 4.2% water, and 1,200 parts per million sulfur, the eruption profile changes from predictably effusive to potentially explosive. Thermal imaging shows surface temperatures of 1,250 dog series. Flow velocities measured by radar suggest an 8 km per hour advancement. These are not Etna's typical basaltic effusions, and the seismic signature beneath the fracture indicates magma rising from depths the volcano hasn't accessed in modern monitoring history. Italian Civil Protection activates Protocol Rosso, reserved for scenarios requiring immediate population displacement. Sirens echo through Zafarana Etne, Milo, and the surrounding villages. Evacuation orders reach 18,000 residents by SMS, radio, and loudspeaker trucks. Within 90 minutes, lava has advanced 3 kilometers. The mountain is not following its script. The immediate question isn't whether this eruption is dangerous. That's evident. The question is why a volcano monitored more intensively than almost any on Earth gave signals that weren't recognizable until the flank was already open. 70 seismic stations encircle Mount Etna. 30 GPS receivers track millimeter scale deformation. Gas sensors sample sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide continuously. This is not a volcano that erupts by surprise. Yet the pattern that emerged between November 8th and 12th didn't match the archive. November 8th, deep earthquake swarm begins. Magnitudes 2.1 to 4.3. Depths 28 to 35 kilometers, far below Etna's typical shallow reservoir at 2 to 8 kilometers. The tremors form a vertical column beneath the southeast flank, magma forcing its way upward through pathways that shouldn't exist in current structural models. November 10th, GPS displacement accelerates. The southeast flank slides outward at 9 centimeters in 36 hours. Not the gradual creep Etna displays between eruptions. This is a pressurized movement. Something is wedging the mountain apart from within. November 11th, gas flux surges. Sulfur dioxide emissions reach 18,000 tons per day, triple the baseline. The chemistry suggests fresh magma degassing from depth. Dr. Marco Neri, lead volcanologist at INGV, recognizes the signature from 2002, the last time Etna opened lateral fissures on this scale. At 2347 on November 11th, seismic tremor shifts from episodic to continuous. Harmonic frequency indicates fluid movement, magma ascending through conduits. Dr. Neri convenes his team remotely. They reprocess the GPS data independently. They cross-reference gas chemistry with satellite thermal anomalies. By 0430, three separate analysis streams converge on the same conclusion, lateral intrusion imminent.